Let's again talk about secured hubs and virtual WAN and custom route tables and how we can use that to have flows going in different directions. In a previous video, we looked mainly at how to have different VNets in Azure, either talking via the firewall or via the virtual hub router. In this video, slightly different scenario. Imagine we have a branch connected into the virtual WAN hub. In this case, it's a VPN gateway, but it could equally be SD-WAN branches via an NVA in the hub from a vendor like VeloCloud or Versa or Fortinet. Or it could be an express route gateway, which connects to an MPLS network or a data center via one or more express route circuits. Just imagine anything in this bottom half of the diagram being a branch that's injecting its roots into virtual WAN. And then at the top here, we've got two categories of spokes, a blue category, where we want to allow that traffic to bypass the Azure firewall inside of the secured hub and talk directly to our branch, in this case, via a VPN gateway. And we have a red category of spoke where we want to control that traffic via the Azure firewall before it goes back to on-premises. A particular customer that's had this requirement recently was one where for them, the red category of spokes was their normal spokes in Azure of which they had between 30 and 100, and they wanted to secure that traffic before it left Azure and went onwards to their branch that was connected in. But then they had this other spoke, a singular spoke, which hosted a backup application, which backed up traffic from on-premises locations and did so with a constant stream of data. And that was fairly deterministic, predictable traffic and rather than paying the constant processing charges of Azure Firewall, which comes with partial charging based on per gigabyte, they were happy to set a static NSG on the spoke here and just therefore wanted to use the virtual WAN hub as a router and a function to connect to their branch sites. So in this video, what I'm going to do is explain how this topology can be achieved using custom root tables. As we can see here, we've got a blue root table here, red root table here, default root table here. So let's jump into the portal, show you why things are configured the way they are and how that behavior manifests itself in the portal and ultimately in the traffic flows being different within our network. Let's start off with the basics. Here's our virtual WAN hub. We know it's secured because there's a, a red firewall icon up here. We see the hub itself has got the address space 192.168.1.0, which is highlighted here on the diagram. Pay attention to that because some of the next tops we'll see later in the effective routes analysis fall within the address space, as you would expect. We have a VPN gateway deployed. If we double click into the VPN gateway configuration, we can see that it's private IP addressing comprised of 192.168.1.4 and 1.5, and it's got a BGP IP addressing allocated of 1.13 and 1.12. I've popped them on the diagram because as we'll see later, they are also relevant. I won't belabor the point around VPN here because it's just been used as an example of a branch, but this is connected to a remote location where I've got a external network with 10.100 slash 16, the virtual machine on premises. N1004, and there is BGP running between these sites for dynamic route exchange. If I inspect the Azure Firewall resource that's deployed inside of my secured hub, I can see that it has got the private IP address 192.168.1.132, which again is reflected on the diagram here. So we're starting to build out some of the next hops we would expect to see for our virtual machines inside of these respective spokes. This firewall is managed by an Azure Firewall policy which is rather straightforward. It's very simply got one line in the rule base, a network rule, which either allows traffic or does not allow traffic. Therefore, what we would expect to see is when we flip that from allow to deny, it will affect the red flow, but won't affect the blue flow. Coming back to virtual WAN now, let's start and look at the root tables, which is the real meat on the bones of our configuration and how we're achieving these red and blue lines, which are taking different paths through my hub. You see here, I've got the, the default root table, non, red, and blue. Let's step through these one by one, and I'll explain why they are configured how they are. 
The default root table has no static roots. In terms of associations, branches are associated to the default root table. So in virtual WAN today, all branches have to be associated to the default root table. You can only be associated to one root table, so that's fixed and known. And that means that whatever roots exist in the default root table, the branches will learn of those roots and they'll have reachability to those prefixes directly. So they'll, they'll learn the roots to the specificity of what exists in the root table. In terms of the virtual networks that are configured to be associated to the default table, I've only got spoke one here. Spoke one's not being used in my lab, so we can ignore that. So for the purposes of this lab, none of the spoke vnets are associated to the default table. And then let's have a look at propagations. Which of my connections are propagating to default? We can see here that my branches are not propagating to default. The only virtual network that is propagating to default is three. What does that mean? That means that the, the blue VNet is sending its reachability, sending its roots to the default table. So anything that's associated with default will learn about the address spaces attached to that VNet. And if we look at our diagram, the only thing associated with default is VPN gateway. So under the covers here in virtual WAN, that VPN gateway will learn about my address prefix 172.16.3.0 slash 24 directly via VNet peering, which will cause the traffic from the VPN gateway to go directly to that VNet, not to Azure Firewall. Now let's have a look at the blue table. Again, no static routes configured. I can't associate branches to this root table. They must be associated to default, as we talked about. The only spoke that's associated to blue is spoke three. That means that it will learn any roots that are within the blue root table. But to answer the question of what roots will it learn, we have to look at propagations. Which connections and branches are propagating to blue? Well, no VNets are, but my branches are propagating to default. So this takes care of the reverse path for blue. So my branches, my VPN gateway in this example, is sending the reachability to 10.100/16 into blue directly. So blue knows how to get to the VPN gateway to get to these remote sites directly at the specificity of slash 16, which means that takes care of the egress from the spoke to the VPN gateway bypassing the Azure Firewall. If we look on spoke 3's effective routes on the NIC of this virtual machine here, we can see that represented in the routing table. So we see here, I've got source route from virtual network gateway with the next hop of my branch prefix twice. And if we look at the next hop here, those are those addresses that I noted on the diagram, the BGP addresses of the VPN gateway. Under the covers here, there's more than one node address for the VPN gateway service. So that means when my VM in the VNet tries to contact 10.104, the route that's going to win is both of these, and it will ECMP across them both. No mention of Azure Firewall in that flow, hence blue to blue is bypassing Azure Firewall. Then finally, let's look at our third route table here, the red route table. See here, I've got a static route configured. I'm configuring anything in the private IP address space within the RFC 1918 space, the 10 range, the 172 range, the 192 range. Send it to the next hop of Azure Firewall. And this is a special next hop that gets dynamically learned for selection in this field when you have an Azure Firewall inside of that secured virtual hub. So if the virtual machine in this VNet has no other reachability to a private IP address. Effectively, it's gateway of last resort, or RFC 1918, is to send it to the Azure Firewall. Firewall there with the IP address ending 1.132. Associations again, branches must be associated to default, so they're not associated to the red routing table. My red spoke, spoke to, is associated with the red routing table, which means that it's going to learn about the routes that exist in the red routing table. And if we look at our diagram here, 
nothing is actually propagating to red, so there's no information to learn. Effectively, that is an empty root table. And if we look inside of the effective roots for our NIC of our red virtual machine, the impact of that empty root table becomes immediately visible. We've got some of the routes you would expect. We've got the local VNet route. We've got the hub route via VNet peering. And then down here, we've got the impact of those three static routes, our RFC 1918 routes. They appear as next top virtual network gateway when in fact that's actually the Azure firewall. You see here the next top IP address ending 1.132. That's our Azure firewall. But from the VM's perspective, when it thinks, how do I get to 10.100.0.4 when I'm sending packets to that address? Well, I've got no idea that branch exists. I will do as good as I can, which is to hit this route here, send it to Azure firewall. And let's think about the reverse flow. When the VPN gateway receives a packet from on-premises and it's trying to send that packet to the red VM, how will it think about the reachability to that VM? Remember, it's a part of the default root table. Whereas blue was propagating its reachability to default, red is not propagating. Red is only propagating to an empty root table, a root table called none. Therefore, the VPN gateway has no idea that this address space exists directly via VNet peering. And in effect, the only way it can get to there is to send it via Azure Firewall using logic in the platform within the secured virtual hub. So that's the logic behind the diagram, the intent within the portal. Let's see if it's actually working. Currently, my Azure Firewall policy with that single rule that's governing how this Azure Firewall allows or denies traffic is set to allow traffic. So I would expect all traffic, blue to on-prem, red to on-prem to be working at the moment. If I jump to my virtual machines here to check the current reachability via ICMP, I can see that the blue VM here is working. It's sending packets as expected. Whereas the red virtual machine here, if I send traffic, that's also got packets coming back via ICMP. So as we expect, both flows here are working. Let's move this ping over here onto the left-hand side and go ahead and change my Azure Firewall rule to deny. We can see here that the rule that I've just set to deny is still processing according to the portal. But if we look over here at our red virtual machine, we can see the ping stop running. So that's taken effect. And to confirm that is having the required behavior, we can look into the Azure Firewall logs to confirm that packet's been denied. If I zoom in here to one of the log captures, we can see that earlier on that rule was allowing traffic from 172.16.2.4 is red VM going to 100.0.4, which is this one down here. If we skip right to the most recent log entry, we can see that the same flow, same source and destination is now flipped to being denied. Meanwhile, if I look at my blue VM, that's still sending traffic happily because even though the Azure Firewall policy is denying the traffic, the blue line, as we've shown before, is never actually going via the firewall, so that deny policy has no effect. Okay, well, thanks for watching again. I hope you found that video useful on what is a pretty popular topic of virtual WAN, secured hubs, Azure Firewall. The main takeaway here is once you understand those concepts of association, propagation, and what they do to your traffic flows, you can combine them in very simple ways to achieve these powerful different flows via the virtual WAN hub. In this video, we demonstrated that in the context of branches, which, as I said, could be VPN connected branches, could be express route, could be SD-WAN via the MVA in the hub model. But I'll catch you in the next one, and thanks for watching.